What's up guys, Michael White here, your favorite developer, and I've officially been a real front-end developer for two months now, give or take a week here or there, but you know, it's the same thing. And already this month's been like drastically different from month one. The sheer volume of things that I have to learn on a daily basis has gone down, which is great because I'm not like having micro panic attacks every day or stressing out about anything. I understand what I'm doing well enough now where I can get through the day for the most part with only asking a couple questions here or there, <laughs> which is better than like the 20 or 30 I would ask beforehand. Uh, so that's good. I'm, I'm retaining things. I'm getting more comfortable. I'm getting better at just building pages essentially. But I'm still facing new problems every day, which is a good thing, right? That's that's the most fun part about being a developer is you know, facing new problems and finding a solution for them. And when I come across some of them, I'll try my hardest to solve it alone. And then I go ask for help. But you know, when you're doing things professionally, time is of the essence. So I can only struggle on my own for so long before I got to reach out. But I feel like I've gotten better, you know, like, so a little bit of confidence is starting to brew. I'm getting comfortable, but not too much, you know. But one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing that I've noticed over this last month was all the repetitive tasks that I have in my day to day. You know, one of the things that drew me into being a developer in the first place was being able to automate all of the minor repetitive things you do every day that you hate doing, right? That you that you have to do, but it's just a time suck. I was like, you know, being a programmer would be pretty cool if you could just automate all of that. And now I see the repetitive task. I know what they are. I can clearly identify them. I'll give you guys an example, all right? Like I started working on an older website and the website has 32,000 images, right? So there's a lot of images on this website. And recently they've been trying to improve the SEO or the search engine optimization for the website. So they ran a Google Lighthouse on it. And if you guys don't know what Google Lighthouse is, it looks at your web page, it finds ways to optimize its speed and make it more search engine friendly, right? And one of the things that it always hits, at least on the sites that I've worked on so far, is the images, right? It always hits the images. Images are never compressed enough. They're never deferred to load off screen or lazy load. If you guys don't know what that means, lazy loading is uh, essentially when the image is not on the screen, it's not gonna be rendered. It's not gonna be brought in with JavaScript until you scroll down to where it is on the page. So that way there's less loading when the page opens up. I hope I explained that good, <laughs> but that's lazy loading. So typically CLS will grab images that need to be lazy loaded. And when you lazy load an image, you need to set a height and a width. Otherwise you might get this issue where your image will like half load or not load. So you gotta set like a height and a width. It doesn't have to be exact, you can use dimensions, but you have to go through and set that. Now, if you have 32,000 images you need to compress, <laughs> even if you did it in batch, you're looking at a multiple day job of just compressing images, okay? That's a lot. Some of the pages on this website are essentially static, right? Like the only way to change them is to manually go into the HTML and change the content for that page, right? The whole website's not like this, but there are pages that are like that. And the pages that are like that, they have a bunch of images on them. So I was faced with a situation <laughs> where I had to compress 32,000 images and then go through where all the images are placed statically, you know, where they're not being pulled in from the back end with JavaScript. And like I said, this is an older web page, and there was a lot of statically placed images on this page. <laughs> but I'd have to go through all of them and then like one by one set the height and the width for the dimensions. That is a beast. Luckily, somebody that I work with knows Python and they were able to create a program that would download all the images, compress the images, and then re-upload them to the database. So that's what planted the seed of learning Python in my head. It's something I've always wanted to do, but I was finally able to see it in action for the first time and see just how effective that was. They ended up letting the program run and it took like, I think two days, it ran for two days and it got all the images compressed and re-uploaded. Something that manually would have took probably more than <laughs> two days of like active, of actively, you know, drag and dropping the images back and forth. So that was really cool to see. So I start learning Python with this really good Udemy course. Uh, I'll have the link posted to it down below. I can't remember the girl's name right now, but it's a kick-ass Udemy course. It's really good. 
everything's explained really well and I really like it. And now that I know what I want to do with Python, I know why I'm learning it and it always makes everything so much easier to learn when you have a why. And I know some of you guys are thinking, Michael, didn't you try to learn PHP and Solidity for blockchain development? Yes. Yes, I did. And you know what? <laughs> I have fun doing that, all right? It's fun learning new languages. It just so happens that I have a more urgent need for Python right now than I do for blockchain development. But Solidity and all that is something I'm going to go back to. But right now, my focus is on Python just because of how easy it can make my day. Also, pro tip for any aspiring developers out there, if you guys want to like separate yourself from a lot of people, get comfortable with dev tools, specifically the Google Lighthouse and the Chrome dev tools. Run that on the pages you build and optimize your pages for that Lighthouse search, for CLS, all right, for SEO. Get in the habit of doing it now and having like a good CLS score and, you know, Use that to sell yourself because more and more often people are looking at SEO optimization and like that's what they want. And as a client, you got to understand they don't know the inner workings of what makes the images load or how everything works. All they see is the score that Google's given your web page for SEO for search engine optimization. And if they see like a fail score on there, they're going to want you to make it a pass score, right? They're paying for it. So it will go a long way for you to right now, if you're just learning, just starting, Whenever you make a page, just start thinking in your head, optimizing for CLS. At the very least, set heights and widths for your images and work on lazy loading all of them. It'll save you a lot of time, a lot of hassle, and a lot of headache in the future. That's what I'm going to do going forward. And I never again want to find myself in a situation where I have to manually compress 32,000 images and set heights and widths for them ever again. But if I do... If I do have to work on somebody's page that's like that, at least now I'll know a little bit of Python and be able to automate the majority of the work. So that's gonna do it for this video. Quick side note, I also met my coworkers for the first time. We're all remote, so we never see each other. That was cool, interesting experience, meeting some developers in person. Interesting time, <laughs> but it was cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, give me that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'm coming up on one year of being on YouTube now, and I never, ever thought like this channel would grow at all honestly <laughs> i just put it out there and it's cool to see the channel is almost at a thousand subscribers within a year to some people that's nothing to me that is fucking awesome all right it's really cool hopefully we get the channel to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and we keep growing from there i made a promise to myself by the way i refuse <laughs> to buy a camera or upgrade any of my youtube equipment till i hit 1000 subscribers then I can justify the purchase. But for now, we're sticking with what we got. Hope you guys enjoy the content. Uh, if you guys are interested in the community discord, that too is growing. A lot of devs and devs in the making over there, all talking, chatting, communicating and growing together. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll have a link to the discord below as well. And I think that's everything. I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Peace.